quiet book with a really positive tale to be told looking at queerness in its different forms and I really... Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly reading vlog and this time it is the themed weekly reading vlog. I wanted to do a themed pride weekly reading vlog for this month obviously for June and everything. Not that you should only read pride books during June. It's actually worked out that pretty much every week this month so far has been pride themed. Like I just finished The Tainted Cup which had pride representation in there. Before that, I was reading Harrow the Ninth, with a clearly pride representation in there with lesbian necromancers. And I feel really good about it. I have had some amazing standout books this month. It has been fantastic. But this specific book, I have been planning to read for this specific vlog since I picked it up. And I'm very excited to say that I'm going to be reading Nettle Black by Nat Reeve. This is a historical fiction book and we're following Henry Nettleback in 1893. Like she has to act fast or she'll be married off by her elder sister. Believing the safety of her wealthy life isn't as simple as she thought. She's ambushed, robbed and saved by a mysterious organisation, part detective agency, part neighbourhood watch. A desperate Henry disguises herself and enlists. Sent out to investigate a string of crimes, she soon realises that she's living in a small rural town with surprisingly big problems. Historical fiction mystery, however, this book is all about finding your place in the world, challenging myths about queerness, particularly transness, as a modern phenomenon. I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. I think this one is going to be fantastic. It is what I have been saving for this particular vlog, although I am terrified because look, and I know I've been going on about it. I even spoke about it last week because I've been thinking about the fact I'm going to be reading this this week. But do you see the size of that font? Do you see the size? I mean, this book is over 400 pages long. And that font size, you might as well be 600 pages at this point. Like, it is tiny. But I am going to be annotating. My pens are thin enough that I should just be able to underline things. God, is it tiny. But I'm really excited to read this one. This one was actually recommended to me when I went out book shopping in March with a bunch of booktubers. I'll have the video linked below. I do also have an ebook lined up, which I've left my Kindle, but I have an ebook lined up, which I think I'm gonna be starting on Monday because uh, I have decided to start off this vlog. I mean, you would have seen if you watched last week's vlog, but I started this vlog off early so that, I'm not gonna read this now because I actually have to get ready for work soon, but I just have an extra couple of days to read this book because because the fact that the font is absolutely tiny, so it just gives me time, especially because at the end of this weekly read and vlog, I'll be going into early shifts, so I'll be quite tired after work. So I wanna try and make sure I can get as much read by then. So yeah, I do have a ebook that I want to be starting on Monday. I know it's Mortal Follies. Who is the author? It's the author of um, Boyfriend Material, because I really enjoyed Boyfriend Material. And then when I saw they had done this one, I was like, oh. It sounds really fun. And I don't actually know what it's about. I just know I think the representation in it is sapphic, but I could have that wrong. Basically, I saw the fact that it was an author that I like and it's meant to be a fun romance. Again, I could have that wrong. Basically, I'm telling you, I don't know anything about this book. I just know that it's by an author that I've really enjoyed before, that there will be pride representation in it, and we're going to read it for this week. You read and vlog as my ebook for the week. So those are the reading plans. I hope you enjoy the vlog. I hope you're having a great month, and let me know what you've been up to and what you've been reading, and have you read either of the books that I'm planning to read for this vlog? But yeah, I've been, honestly, I've had a really good reading month. It's been so good, but I do have to actually get ready for work. So, Thank you for joining me for this video and I will update you when I have made some progress in this book and what my first impressions are. I'm expecting it to be really good. I mean, I like a historical setting. I like the fact that we've got some mystery going on and the fact that we've got the story that's being told around transness and queerness, I think is gonna be an amazing combination. Let's get, I was gonna say to read in, no, let's get to work. <laughs>
I'm really enjoying this. I'm, it's so good. It's so fun. You know what? I've been thinking about it and all the books that have been on my June TBR have been wins so far. Like I'm having a fantastic read a month it's just been so good like everything i've picked up for my actual june tbr has been amazing and this is no different so i read a tiny bit more this morning it is taking me a little bit longer to read this is going to be the last time i say it but say it with me the font is tiny so it is taking me about double the time it would normally take me to read so i'm only up to chapter five page 66 i've actually spent two hours reading this book between yesterday and a little bit this morning but i'm only up to 66 and and you know what that's fine I, it doesn't bother me it's going to take me a little bit longer to read that's fine because i'm really enjoying this book henry is a delightful main character so i have started annotating i do actually have four tabs put to one side i haven't used all four yet um I'm planning to use those like depending on different themes that come up. For now I've just got the two. One is pink and that is just for funny moments because Henry is hilarious. They are such a great character. I can't wait to read more from them. A lot of the book is their diary which I love. I love how amazing they are. So let's go into that first. So Henry is somebody that struggles to talk, like doesn't like confrontation, struggles to express themselves. However, when they write things down, they are hilarious. They're brilliant. They are really witty. They are amazing. They just can't do it in person because they get really intimidated and really shy. So you're seeing Henry that is being told by sister that, hey, you have to go out and get married now. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to this woman's party and you are going to go and get married. And uh, they're like, no, 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 that's not what I want. So their solution is all oh, I'm gonna run away. I'm gonna run away because that, that is all I can do because I can't do this. I, I do not want to get married. I don't wanna deal with this. And so runs away and then ends up falling in with, oh, what do they call themselves? The Daliangle Division who are a division of women that are together to try and keep their streets safe in this little rural town because they've got no actual police there and they are responsible for looking after this place. It is very entertaining. They don't really know what they're doing. They're just kind of making it up as they go along um, and Henry gets pulled into all of it and we do meet Septimus who is a very interesting character and I'm really enjoying seeing how Henry and Septimus are getting on with one another and a couple of other people. A lot of this is, as I say, from Henry's diary but you do also get letters. This one which is the admin that Henry had to sign to say that they were now part of the Daliangle division. It's just so fun, so entertaining and like I say Henry is actually delightful. They curse in fruit so instead of saying oh my god they say sweet plums or oh my nectarines. It is just so ridiculous and funny but also really endearing and I just I love Henry as a character they are the best character and then I have used orange and I'm using orange for quotes that I really love because I imagine there's going to be some really powerful quotes in this and so far there was one that I just really enjoyed and this one says it was the longest someone had ever held my gaze in real earnest without a shred of sarcasm or scorn or pity and perhaps it was that or perhaps it was the idea of what she had described of an existence that spiralled beyond one roof and one stifling family and one narrow trajectory from there to the nearest nuptials. Perhaps it was simply the sheer thrill of shaping my life to the rhythms and purposes of persons who, however much they still had to work out, were most certainly not Edwina and Rosamond which is Henry's sisters. It's great. I just think that this is going to be a great tale of Henry finding themselves and becoming true to themselves. So I'm really, really looking forward to continuing on with this. I think it's going to be great, but it is going to take me a bit of time, but I'm not going to rush read it. I'm just going to enjoy it. And you know what? This vlog will go on for as long as it needs to go on for me to finish that book. I said how I wasn't going to start the ebook that I was going to be reading for this week until Monday. I ended up starting it earlier because um well let's just say the ebooks i need to be reading for another vlog it's not going so well so i had to break it up a little bit and i decided to pick up mortal follies by alexis hall loving it loving it so much it's so good so i was reading it so i'm now up to chapter four page 42. i was reading this and the first after the first chapter so you get a little bit of a prologue and then you get the first chapter after that i was like 
this is just Bridgerton, but make it with fairies, and I love it. And then I was looking to see about the second book, like if there was going to be a second book or when it was out and stuff, which it is, it's coming out in August. And it actually said on the tagline, for fans of Bridgerton, and I'm just like, yes, because it is, it's so fun, it's so good. And honestly, the fact that I can't watch Bridgerton, at, I keep playing with my friend, I need to cut my friend. I always cut my fringe myself, and I just haven't for a while, and it's just right in the way. Anyway, um, but yeah, because I haven't been able to watch Bridgerton, because loads of editing to do, it's been so fun to actually get that kick, but from a book, and oh, I'm loving it, it's so good. So the prologue, the person that is narrating this story, the way it started off, this first little paragraph told me I'm going to love this book, it says, introductions, gentle reader, which, hello, straight Bridgerton reference there, where we have Miss Whistledown that goes, dear gentle reader, straight, straight thing there. Anyway, moving on. Introductions, gentle reader, are in order. I am that knavish sprite that frights the maidens of the villagery. I am Oberian's jester. Was Oberian's jester. That's rather the issue. I am called hobgoblin by some, and contrary to what certain people might have told you, it is not a name I like, and you shall not have good luck if you repeat it in my hearing. I am also your narrator. Love it. Honestly, they are such a great narrator. They talk frequently talk about the fact that, hey, I'm changing form, I'm going into a spider or a mouse, or I'm turning into mist and stuff so I can see what's going on. And they are telling you the story of this lady, Miss Mitchellmore. Well, she's having a bit of a problem. She was at this party and it's kind of where our story starts and he spies her and he's like, oh, seems like something could be happening here. And her dress is disintegrating at this party. It's clearly a fairy maid dress and it's now disintegrating. And she's like, oh crap, what do I do? I can't go back to the party because I will be ruined. Don't know what to do. Thankfully, we do get help from this duke. Well, she's not a duke, but she's called the duke. But she has been accused of murdering her husband and brothers and everything so that she is the sole heir of the estate. But she decides to help Miss Mitchellmore and then everyone's like, oh, why is she helping you? She is a witch. And all of this stuff, like there is a lot going on. It's really, really well done. There is an author note at the start as well as to what to expect from this book. The author put in a list of things that are noted to the extent that they're spoken about so that you can, you know, protect yourself. If these things trigger you, don't upset yourself. Like you're meant to read because you enjoy it. But like there's one particular instance where we are at this gentleman's club, very much enjoy each other's company in a very sexual way which obviously is not allowed during this time because it is based in the Regency period. It's very dangerous. It's kind of like they know about it, let's just not talk about it sort of thing. But one of the gentlemen there decided to go to this goddess and was changed from a man to a woman. And transphobia is there. It is pushed out against. It is mentioned there. And honestly, when I was reading, I was like, what? Why is that in here? And then I carried on reading. I was like, oh, okay, that's a lot more explained. Went back to the author's note and it is in there. So I like the fact that it does talk about it. It does challenge it. And then it goes, you know what? I was wrong. As long as you're happy and you are yourself, you are clearly a woman and that is who you are. Really, I've got nothing to say on this and we shouldn't have and our behavior was atrocious. And I like that there is that accountability in here. Just, just check your trigger warnings and stuff. But so far I'm loving the setting. I think it's really fun. I like our narrator. They are hilarious. They like to play little pranks and things when they feel like, um, excuse me, this is getting a bit boring. Let me play this prank or let me speed this up a bit. It's really, really fun. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely going to read more of this. I'm reading it slowly because I am having to read the other ebook as well. So I'm just trying to read a bit of one. When I have enough of that, I can then go to this. But it's great fun. Honestly, I'm having a great time. These are both more like historical lean-in book, but this one has more magic and stuff in with Mortal Follies, and this one doesn't have the magic in, but they both have comments on how women are seen, and also how you perceive yourself, and how others perceive you, and the expectations of how you identify with yourself, which I imagine is going to get explored more in here. We've started having little inklings of it, but not loads, where Henry is really starting to explore themselves, and who they actually are. You just have that a lot more forward thinking in Mortal Follies, like a lot quicker 
paste. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I think both of these have been great. I want to try and read more of Nettle Black today. We'll see, because like I say, I've got quite a bit to do. So speaking of that, I can't carry on waffling. As much as I'm enjoying waffling to you and I'm enjoying these books so much, I think they're great read. Give them a try. They're so much fun. I actually have a whole nother video to update and then I've got a video to export and I've got things to do. So I'll catch up with you when I've read more of Nettle Black. I just, I'm enjoying it. And this cover is gorgeous. I do love this book. It looks beautiful. It's so funny. That's the thing. Both of these books are so funny and it's needed. It's great. Like they've both got this slight humorous tone to it and I'm just enjoying it and I'm liking how our characters have their own little quirks and stuff and it's just, it's great. Right, I said I wasn't gonna waffle on and that's exactly what I've done, but I am gonna disappear and I'll catch up with you probably, uh, it's probably gonna be Tuesday at this rate. Probably Tuesday, might be tomorrow. Guess we'll find out. Anyway, right, stop waffling. some good reading progress which is great in both books actually I'm enjoying both of them I have also started watching Bridgerton season three I've only watched the first episode but that's what I decided to do yesterday morning because I managed to get my editing done a little bit earlier than expected and I could have sat there and read some more and I just thought you know what nah now I really want to start Bridgerton, I really want to get into season three, and am I going to be devastated when I finish it? Yes, but I am really looking forward to read it, watching more of that. I really enjoy it, it's really fun, and this season is more friends to lovers, which I do like, I think it's quite cute. I'm going to be interested in more the conflict, like I feel like this season's going to be very predictable because we know what the conflict's going to be, we know that they're eventually going to end up together because, you know, romance, but I kind of don't mind and I'm kind of interested to see how it all goes and then how they end up getting over it and everything so it's predictable but it's fun you know anyway let's get into the reading news because I do have a few things I want to do today actually you know what we're not going to get into the reading news yet let's ramble first so I have a few things I want to do I've spent the morning with my partner I then did some food shopping and this afternoon I'm thinking to do some filming thinking to get my July TBR done because I actually have quite a lot that I already need to read for July so it would be good to get the TBR done and get an, like an idea of it so I can start planning July fully because I like to plan my reading and like what books I'm reading in what weeks Yes, it's a bit excessive, it's just what works for me. Potentially also do my July reset video, like I've started it. Once I've done my TBR, I can do the rest of it. So I might do that today, or I might leave that for another day. I haven't decided on that one. Oh, and I wanna make some bread. So I don't know why, but I've really got into baking. Like I'm really, really enjoying it. And one thing I would love to do is to be able to bake my own bread, because I love bread. I've never done it before so I brought all the stuff for it so hopefully we're gonna see how it goes. I will obviously show you I think that'll be the next set of b-roll that you see is me making the bread and fingers crossed it goes okay. I don't know if it is. I've never done it before but it's worth a try. I've seen a few different recipes. I've watched a few videos so fingers crossed we can make it work. Now that all those tangents are over, let's get into the book news. So I have been reading Mortal Follies, I'll put it up here, which I have really been enjoying. Like I'm really enjoying Mortal Follies. I'm now up to chapter 13 and this is just really, really fun. Like it is very simple. It's kind of corny, kind of cheesy, 
kind of predictable but also really fun and I do stand by it does feel like Bridgerton but it's just so much more hilarious. So we've got one of the characters, Miss Bickle, who is Miss Mitchell Moore's best friend. Miss Bickle is kind of obsessed with fairies. She is very much like, oh my god, let's go running out into the forest and find some fairies and find out what's going on with you. And she is hilarious. She is so silly. She really injects the humour into this book. And yes, it's overdone and ridiculous, but I love it. We do have the kind of like angsty romance going on between Miss Mitchellmore and the Duke of Annadale. It's kind of like a wanting on one side and the other side's wanting it, but also pushing her away and is like no I'm not doing this and is like this very much like I'm a not nice person basically you know you all think I've killed off my family and I'm a witch this is how you see me and like yeah but is actually a really nice person I just think it's really fun it is really silly it's definitely a lot more I don't know it's just fun and it's quite even though it shows at the time that being gay lesbian etc isn't frowned upon at this time at the same time they're also really accepting of it it's like it's not spoken about i mean miss bickle talks about it a lot because she loves it but then she loves romance and she loves that sort of thing but it's kind of like kind of accepted but we just don't talk about it like it's frowned upon but not to such a severe extent is is actual history shows don't know if i'm doing a good job of explaining that but it, it's that you know it's a lot more accepting than what it would be which is really fun and i am enjoying it and i don't know it's just a cute fun time like it's an easy one i can pick up and put down you really don't need to focus on it it is not going to be the most memorable book it is not going to be a new favorite but it's really really silly and like this is a sort of romance that I like so in a way it reminds me a little bit like the secret service of tea and trees and just in how ridiculous it is um, and I've got a demon's guide to wooing a witch and I think that's going to be very similar vibes and mortal follies gives me like the same sort of vibes as these books just like I'm really looking forward to reading this one and I do want to get the rest of the books in this series yes romance is not my go-to genre and it's not by any means but it is so fun and it is really nice just to break up everything else you're reading to have something that is just fun you're not there to like get loads from the book you're not there for the beautiful writing or all of this other stuff like you're just there to have a fun time and i'm enjoying it for that like i really really am i've only got today and tomorrow off work so i will continue reading this when i'm back at work and honestly because i finished the other ebook i was also reading for another video i'm now going to be able to dedicate more time to this one so i think i'd definitely be able to get this one finished soon then we have nettle black now i am enjoying nettle black i'm up to chapter 13 page 201 and again if we say that i'm gonna wrap up this vlog on sunday i would definitely get this read because it's literally only 215 pages left for me to read i have not been annotating like well tabbing as much as i thought i would so i have been underlining things but i haven't been using the tabs as much and if i don't go back to using them then i may just take them out i am enjoying it but it's just not to the extent of tabbing load i have added in two different colors though so we have green for talk about pronouns and accepting one another and how to kind of interact with people when you don't want to say the wrong thing. So in this instance, we have Pip Property and Pip Property, when our main character, Henry, first meets them, Henry's very much like, oh, um, she, he, uh, sorry, I don't know. And Pip goes, it's fine. I don't mind, but how about we try something that I actually prefer, which is they. Henry's so accepting of like, yeah, that's fine. And then other people enter, end up entering in the room. We have the director of the Dally Angle division. Even she goes, oh, um, miss, or is it sir, property? And property goes, just property. Don't need any of the other genderfications. I'm not interested in that. Like, I don't want to be constrained. And they're like, yep, no problem. Like, they're really accept, but it's good because of the way it tackles it and it answers it in such a way that it can be one of those things where you don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to end up offending anybody. And so doing it that way by just saying, look, what, what would you prefer is a much better way of doing it. So I do think where it says on the back that it talks about the practicalities of articulating queer perspectives when you're like struggling for words, I think it does that really, really well in here. So I started putting that in to see if like I would get any more. So far, I haven't. There has been things where Henry's discovering about themselves that actually I like. I like girls. 
and that's really good and I'm really enjoying that and her sister ends up finding out about it and Rosamund's like yeah and it's fine you do you so that's really nice it is a little bit predictable I'm not gonna lie there has been a bit of a murder mystery element to this I can't remember if I said but we have this um decapitated head and they're trying to find out what the hell's going on but that is really in the background this is more of a book about Henry finding themselves finding where they fit in and what they actually want out of life and you know the things that they like so I'm enjoying that but it is very slow so I am find it like I do enjoy it when I get into it I get really into it but I do find that about 60 pages is my cap to sit down and read in one go that's kind of my cap. The other tab I put in was grey and I was starting to do this just for how women are treated in society at this time but again it was only really like brought up a couple times. Like it's there but it's not anything deep enough for me to make a whole tab about it all. I am thinking if I don't continue tabbing, because it's been a long time since I've done a tab, if I don't continue then I probably will just take them out and just carry on with just underlining the book, which is absolutely fine because I am underlining things and I do like Henry. I like the fact, I just like Henry as a character. Like Henry is so fun and so ridiculous and so innocent and I just really enjoy it. So I am looking forward to finishing this one. It's, it's been a good reading week. Like I have zero complaints. I actually think this month has been probably the strongest read -em. I don't know. I, I can't say that without looking at my journal, but just in terms of enjoying what I'm reading, I would say this has been a really strong month in terms of everything off my TBR, my actual TBR for the month. I have really enjoyed and it has been so fun. Anyway, right, let's not ramble. We did all of that already. Let's get some B-roll of making that bread and I'll catch up with you at some point. confession to make and the confession is I have not read much of Nestle Black like I was meant to over the last few days. The last time I updated you I think I did yeah I did read my 50 pages for that day. I did not do that yesterday and look yesterday was a busy day I got a lot done but I also woke up quite early which is what I prefer to do on my days off I like to wake up nice and early but I was tired when I woke up and I knew if I was going to read which is what I was going to do is read for an hour it would probably end up that I'd start falling asleep again so I decided you know what I'm not going to do that instead I decided to watch Bridgerton and I was really good I watched just one episode of Bridgerton and it was great I loved it, but I was very good when it finished. I was like, okay, we're gonna get the day started. And I got myself together, did some filming, baked the bread, which was not bad for a first attempt. I think what I need to do is do what I did, but as smaller rolls, I think that would be better because it was very nice, like the crust, was very good, the bit that I'd cut off was very nice, but in the center, it was still very doughy. But the problem is, is if I'd left it to cook for longer, because I did try putting it back in the oven to cook the center a bit more, but all that really happened was what I thought would happen, which is the crust got really, really hard on the outside, and the inside still wasn't cooked. It's a learning curve. What I need to do is, I mean, I, I did follow the recipe, but either turn the heat down so it cooks it a little bit slower so that the inside gets done, or what I'm planning to do is just make them into like, smaller bread rolls and I think that would be perfect but it was really fun to do and I'm pleased I gave it a try. Then my partner came around yesterday afternoon and we played loads of board games and had dinner together that was really nice and then the evening happened and I was planning to just read 
nettle black. And I thought once my partner had left and everything and I'd got myself ready for today, for like work and everything, I had like three hours, well, two and a half hours. And I was like, well, I've got a video uploading, so I can't go to bed before then. You know, I could just do an hour of reading and then watch an episode of Bridgerton. But I thought to myself, I'm gonna do Bridgerton first because if I watch TV like so close to going to bed, it's probably gonna keep me up for longer. So that's what we did. We watched the one episode, then, then I did. I turned it off and I went to read in this and I read one chapter before deciding, yeah, sod it, I'm gonna watch one more episode of Bridgerton. So I watched three episodes of Bridgerton yesterday instead of reading. I'm also kind of not mad about it because this book, like I am enjoying this. So I'm up to chapter 17, page 268 and I am enjoying it and I am definitely gonna get it finished up over the next couple of days. My only thing is that I can put this book down and just not want to go and read it again. But when I do pick it up, I am really entertained. Like all the things I've already said, Henry is very endearing and funny. And I like the story with the decapitated missing head and everything that's going on with that, which is very fun. I do wish that was more in the forefront so we had a little bit more plot to go with this book. I do also wish that some of the talk around queerness and what it is to be queer was spoken about a little bit more. It also makes sense for the historical setting time period that we've got, the way they're handling it and the fact that it's not spoken about loads but I would still appreciate it if it was a little bit more. I was thinking about it quite a lot yesterday evening and I really don't have anything in this book to say that's negative but there is one thing I would take out of it and even then it doesn't change much in this book like it's not loads of the book so there's, there's lots of doing a bad job of explaining this so this book is a journal entries we've got mainly Henry but we do also have a journal entry of this man that's associated with the Dally Angle division and I do enjoy his journal entries the reports at the end of the day that's done by the director of the division vision that kind of recaps everything that's happened that day and that makes sense and they're quick and I like it and there's like another journal entry from somebody else again makes sense it relates back to everything but there are a series of letters between this young man and someone who I won't name in case anyone wants to read this as a bit of a spoiler I feel like it was pretty obvious but also could be a spoiler for some and I feel like their little romance love story that's happening across these letters isn't really needed. It's not actually adding anything to the main story apart from this little commentary on love across social class, which, you know, is nice in of itself, but it doesn't add to the storyline in any way, like not in any way that I've found so far. So I feel like those pages could be taken out and you really wouldn't notice a difference to the rest of the book. But that's it. That's the only thing that I would say I would change about this book and the fact that I would want them to talk a bit more in depth about queerness but that's that's it everything else about this I do enjoy I'm just not compelled to pick it up and read it all the time which is weird because normally I'm not compelled to read a book if I'm not enjoying it but this one I am enjoying it's just I think it's very slow definitely outside my preferred reading taste so I'm not sure if that's got something to do with it and the fact that, you know, this has taken me a long time to get through. If we think about the fact that I started this vlog on Friday, not sure if I read it that Friday evening or not, or morning, was I at work? Yeah, I was at work. So I'm not sure if I started it that Friday, like I can't remember in all honesty, but it's been a week of this vlog already and I still have 150 pages left to go. And it's a short book in reality. The fact that it's taken me seven days to get to page 268 is not like me but I think it's a mixture of we have it being outside my usual genre preference in the sense that this is historical fiction which I do enjoy reading but I do find I tend to put them off a lot. We also have the fact that it's a slow paced historical fiction like what is happening is drawn out. It's only been a few days but it's very drawn out. The point of interest for me in like the investigation into the decapitated head and all of this isn't at the forefront. It is very much in the background of this story and so I feel like for me I'm just finding it really drawn out but also it is entertaining like I do like the writing. I do enjoy the character Characterization. I enjoy the kind of sarcastic irony of it all and you know I do like it but I'm just not 
loving it. Like this is a book that I could say, would I reread it? And I probably would, but it probably wouldn't be for a few years. You know, out of all the books I want to reread, this would be low on the list to reread, but it's still good. And I still want to know what's going to happen. And I want to know if we get those more in-depth conversations. I want to know what happens with the head. Like I want to know all of these things, but I also do struggle to pick it up. Like I, I, it's very much a book that I can be like, oh, but I could go and do this and find some other little task to do instead of sitting down and reading or watching Bridgerton or something like that instead of picking up this book. I definitely think there are some things that could have been sped up in places or like taken out, like not loads, but just a little bit to give this a little bit more pace to it. So I'm a little bit more invested. But at the same time, when I do sit and read it, I enjoy it. Like it's a really difficult one. And I did mention it on Discord saying like, does anyone else ever find this with books that they do sometimes come across books that they are enjoying when they read them, but when they put them down, they just have no urge to pick them up. And thankfully I'm not the only one that's dealt with this. And that is just how it is for this book. I think if you like historical fiction, give this one a try. I think you would really like it. For me, I don't read historical fiction all that much. I've really got to be in the mood for it. And I think that's what my problem with this book is. Is, is I'm just not in the mood for this one. It's not that it's bad in any way, it's just not what I'm in the mood for, so that's what's causing me to not want to pick it up. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try, we're gonna try and push through a little bit more. Thankfully, I have read more of my ebook and I am really enjoying this one. I read a little bit more while I was at work today. Got through a nice chunk of it. I'm now up to chapter 24 page 250 and I'm enjoying this one a lot it is fun and ridiculous and it's just a good time so I can't complain about that one so that one I'm really enjoying it's just really entertaining and I really don't have to think about much and I am liking Nettle Black I, I just find I'm not in the mood for it currently so I can't decide what I'm gonna do this evening I really want to finish up this book I also really want to start a different book I'm also really tempted to start next week's read and vlog so that I can maybe read a little bit of this and then read a bit of another book but then at the same time this vlog's going to be so long so I don't know I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some editing do some food do all of that jazz read some of this and just see if I can just keep going with it and really get into it perfect this evening if I hit a point where I'm like you know what I don't want to read anymore I'm not going to force myself for it and we'll just wrap up the next time you see me will be when I finish off both books and that will be however long it takes well no it can't be because this video has got to go up and I actually need to start editing it if it takes like an extra couple of days like it is what it is I'm not gonna like rush read a book that I do want to take my time with, I do want to enjoy. Also don't wanna force it if I'm not in the mood to read it. Basically this update was just a hot mess really of saying that I'm liking what I'm reading but I also don't want to read it which doesn't make any sense at all. But I'm also loving Bridgerton and I watched three episodes of that yesterday and it was fantastic. So make of that what you will. <laughs> the next time you see me, we will be finishing up this vlog. 100% finishing Mortal Follies. Really enjoying this book. It is very fun and entertaining. I don't know if I want to own a physical copy. Like originally I was like, yeah, I really want to. And then I was thinking about well, what's the point? I have it on my Kindle. I can reread it at any point on my Kindle. Do I need a physical copy of this book? And currently, no, no, I think I'm pretty happy with not having it, but I am really enjoying it. Like it's definitely fun. It's a nice break to Nettle Black. So I am really enjoying it, but I don't think I need a physical copy of it. I might end up picking, it's probably one of those things that I will pick it up second hand and be really happy with that. Anyway, I am just rambling. I'm going around in circles now. So I'm just gonna go and do what I said and catch up with you when I've finished this.
both books. Honestly, kind of eating my words with Nettle Black with what I said about the letters not really being relevant. By the end of this book, everything had been wrapped up and brought together into why it was relevant. So I do think there is a relevance to it. Part of me still thinks that we definitely didn't need quite as many as we, not that we got loads anyway but just maybe a little bit less it was good to see those characters it was good to see them interacting it because it made you connect with them a little bit more and for that i really appreciated it i think just overall i struggled with the middle of this one feeling like it was a little bit too slow for me and again it's nothing against this book because it was really well written it was done in a engaging entertaining way and so for that I really appreciate it it was just it's not really the sort of thing that I would normally go for it's not normally the sort of book I would pick up I definitely prefer things to be either a little bit weirder or a bit darker or maybe more of the mystery or something like that this in itself was more of a character study on different relationships on learning to be yourself and all of these are really lovely and poignant stories to be told it's just not necessarily my favourite thing to read. It sounds weird saying that because I can appreciate it and I do enjoy it, it's just not something that I would gravitate towards, but I liked it. And I do think, again, if you like historical fiction, if you don't mind a slower paced book, I think you would really enjoy this one. For me, I enjoyed it while I was reading it, I thought it was very good, I think the ending wrapped up really well and I do love Henry as a character. And I like the fact that at the end of this book they finally go, I don't want to be a miss. I like how they have come into themselves and is just decided that yes, I am Henry. I am not Henrietta or Harriet. I am Henry. And I liked that. But it was done in this quiet way. And I think that's where my expectations was different, is I was expecting this to be a lot more in depth with its discussions around queerness. And instead it tackled it in a really quiet but poignant way, which was really, really nice. I think I was just expecting something a little bit more different from that but it worked really well for the book for the setting plotline everything so yeah i think it was really good i did really enjoy this one and i would recommend but not if you don't like slow paced stories because this was definitely slower maybe give this one a read from like the library or something if you like a slow paced historical fiction i think you'll really like this and i think you could probably get a lot from it i think it was very very good and i i did like the quiet way it tackled this and I thought it was really well done. It was just getting into the headspace of, yeah, this is a quiet book with a really positive tale to be told, looking at queerness in its different forms. And I really enjoyed that. And I'm really pleased that I read it for this vlog and that it pushed my boundaries on my read and taste a little bit more. And that I like, so I think it's done a really good job. But moving on, we did finish Mortal Follies. And I did really enjoy this book. I thought it was really well done. Again, this is a book that I kind of thought was getting a little bit long because the initial conflict of Miss Mitchell Moore being cursed was kind of resolved at the 50% mark. And I was like, we've still got half a book to go. What on earth are we going to do with this? But it worked. It worked really well. You get to explore different things and I'm not going to say because of spoilers, but I did really enjoy it. I feel like what carried the book for me was two things. One being Robin, our narrator. I really, really enjoyed their narration. I thought it was so fun and so entertaining and I liked the different tales it kind of weaves in mythology but also folklore and all of these different things together and I thought it was really really good. I also loved Miss Bickle as a character. She was my favourite character. She was brilliant. I loved her. She was so entertaining. Bright point of this book for me. I really, really enjoyed her. I thought she was absolutely fantastic. I feel like Miss Mitchellmore herself wasn't as in-depth or fun a character, but Miss Bickle was really, really fun and I would love to learn more about her and the way that she thinks, the way that she perceives things. It was really, really good for that. So yeah, I liked it. I think I have settled on the decision to not have this physically. I still want to read the second book when that comes out in August but I think I'll wait before I actually go out and pick it up I mean I'll do it on 
Kindle again. But I'll wait normally because like things will go down in price after a little while and I'll pick it up at that point because it was really good and it is a book that I would probably pick up and reread at some point for like a fun little light read. However, I kind of want my shelves to reflect a bit more of either nostalgia for books that I really enjoyed in the past, so like books with good memories or books that are like my favourites or by favourite authors and things. And as much as I did really like Mortal Follies, I do prefer boyfriend material, like that's been my favourite and so I would get a copy of boyfriend material for my shelf and then be happy with just that one book. That's something I'm starting to try and get myself used to is you don't need to go out and buy a physical copy of every single book you enjoy on Kindle. Unless of course they become a brand like all time new favourite book. Don't really need to do that, that is the point of having a Kindle is to have my books digitally or at least some of them and not have to have every single physical copy. We'll see how long it lasts. Last, but at the minute that's what I'm feeling saying that I want to go book shopping and I want to get a few different books but I think that's because I'm going into this particular genre that I'm just getting more drawn to like you're going to see in my July TBR that where I'm kind of wanting my reading to go right now and it's kind of swaying a little bit away from the fantasy saying that next week's reading vlog is pretty much just fantasy romance which I'm not mad about so who knows I, I I don't know I think I'm just in a crisis of what is my reading taste and I feel like I need to define it but I don't need to it's just whatever I want to enjoy at the time I read across a variety of different genres but yeah I feel like I'm in a bit of a crisis of what, what do I do and it's a weird one I'm gonna leave my like it's not something I'm gonna focus on I'm just gonna like leave it in the background and eventually we'll come to like a eureka moment and I'll be like this is what it is but anyway that's a tangent that we don't need but I've enjoyed this week's reading I hope you've enjoyed this video it's been a lot of fun and it has taken me a bit longer but I also don't mind that I've had a lot of different videos going on that I've had to do and so having a week that I've taken a little bit longer to read things has been good oh I also finished Bridgerton season three it was really good <laughs> it was really fun I love how at the start of this week I'm pretty much sure I said oh I'm taking a break and then within this vlog I have finished out that season but it was really good it was a lot of fun got a lot more side stories in that one which I'm not too mad about like I think it was good although I know we've got a couple year wait now for season four so we'll see I also think that's kind of good so that I can get back to actually like reading a bit more and editing and Animal Crossing and you know Bridgerton did kind of take over my life for a little while it's like a bittersweet moment like I'm pleased it's over so I can get back to doing my other stuff but also sad it's over because I did really enjoy it so and I am blaming everyone on discord for that one so you know <laughs> okay thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it like genuinely it just means so much to be able to natter on to you about books and have people actually want to watch that and chat back it's, it's great I love it um but yes thank you so much if you've made it this far but you don't know what to comment then leave a fruit what is your favorite fruit leave that in the emojis below because honestly the cursing with fruits was spectacular and is a little character quirk that I'm always going to remember. Honestly, I think that's probably my favorite part of the book. It was just so good. It was so unexpected and it genuinely made me laugh. A fruit, if you made it this far or you just don't know what you'd like to comment and thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do consider giving it that thumbs up, subscribing and commenting. Those three things really help this channel out. My social media links, anyone I've mentioned, will be linked below for you. And I will, of course, catch you in the very next video.